Good morning. Hi, Zoe. It's Tuesday, October 17th. It's about 20 after 7. I couldn't sleep last night. Um, which, as you know, if you've been t paying attention to these videos, I don't sleep uh, much at all. <clears throat> and... Uh, As I've said to to my family and my friends, I am a combination, or driven by a combination of things. Uh, two of them primarily being caffeine and anger. So this is an art talk. I'm gonna do do it about uh, Chris Pratt. You know, this is different, obviously, from the actor. But hey, uh, Chris, if you happen to see this one, uh, you know, I, I I'm not really interested in your personal life. I I'm, I only know you through your work on screen. But uh, you know, uh, I would encourage you to. Take up your namesake, you know, again, there's Pratt, which is a large, large family, you know, uh, I got my Pratt and Whitney patch here from my uncle, uh, which is in Toronto. They, they manufacture aircraft engines, of course. One of the, the most uh, famous examples is uh, the PT-6 uh, turbine. Which is, uh, if I remember, well, it's one of the most produced turbines in all of history. It's in so many different platforms. It's in, it's in the Palaz PC-12. It's in, um, that's the best first one that comes to mind. Uh, I'm thinking about the A-10 and how it, it shares the same engines, the CFMs with, uh, with uh, the CRJ, actually, which is kind of interesting. Anyways, so Chris Pratt, uh, born and raised Newfoundlander. Uh, let's go to the, the actualities here. So this is off the National Gallery of Canada website. I'll just read this blurb. Christopher Pratt was one of Canada's most prominent painters and printmakers. He lived in Newfoundland in St. Mary's Bay along uh, Salaminer River. Pratt was very aware of his identity as a Newfoundlander. This island, its culture, its geography, and its weather had a strong impact on his, on his work. Zoe, what are you doing? She's being a shit disturber. Stop that. You're making noise in my recording. Yeah. But anyway. Um, let's do more of this blurb. In his paintings, Christopher Pratt explores many themes, landscapes, roadscapes, architecture, waterscapes, boats, interior spaces, and the human figure. Through these works, Christopher Pratt presents his vision of Newfoundland and urges us to consider how progress and the modern world are transforming the island. Uh, now, let's do a synopsis of, of Newfoundland's history, uh, mainly of the people that are still alive. Like, Pratt was born in 1935, uh, so that was before Confederation and before Newfoundland uh, joined the rest of Canada, uh, at, like it's during the Second World War. And before that, they were their own country with a, a green, white, and pink flag. The old one, actually the old one, it's a pre it was a Union flag, 
Terra Nova, otherwise known as Newfoundland. We wouldn't, who would have thought? Anyway, uh, let's go with Newfoundland. No, not, you know, not, I was going to slip of the tongue from my sister. Uh, Zoe, of course, is a Labrador Retriever, a black lab. And uh, if you didn't know it before, now you do. That, uh, of course, labs, black labs, were bred for um, working with fishermen to jump into the water and fetch the ends of the nets and bring them back to the boat. Let's go to Newfoundland and Labrador Heritage. It's heritage.nf.ca. Uh, Newfoundland's Confederation election. Anyways. Uh, whether Newfoundland and Labrador should remain as an independent political entity or join the Federation of, of the other British North American colonies was an issue from 1864 to 1949. In 1864, Newfoundland delegates attended the Quebec Conference and signed the resolution, which became a foundation of became uh, the foundation of the 1867 British North America Act. But it was not until over 80 years later, in 1949, that Newfoundland became a Canadian province. So, as I said, you know, the Second World War, or 1949, which is again will be four years after the Second World War. Uh, let's go. Is it the first Newfoundlander regiment? That's it. First Newfoundland regiment has a moose on its on its crest. Uh, is one of the oldest regiments in Canada, and uh, you know there is no confederation without the army. That's the end of it. There is no there there is no uh, there's no Commonwealth. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Different Sarah. That's Sergeant Sarah. Uh, anyways, I'm not going to say her last name here for the, just for the heck of it. Anyways. Uh, so they were involved. Newfoundland regiments. Um, it's, this is his own, own thing, you know, it's its own thing. You know, they had their own, own, own marks. They had their own, uh, had their own traditions, so on and so forth. Let's go. Becoming a regiment. They were offered more money than they'd ever seen in their lives. Dollar fifty. Sorry, dollar a day. You imagine that? You imagine having bullets fly at you for a dollar a day. Now let's look at a dollar a day in in 2023 terms versus 1917. $23.50 a day. That's uh, off of uh, a quick $24.05. 
Anyway, it's not, not much at all. They have bullets flying at you. The possibility of getting blown up or drowning or whatever else. Careful what you sign up for, I guess, eh? Well, they didn't care. You know, it was it was better life. It just goes to show how, how, how hard people actually had it, you know, before the Depression. And... Um, there's this romance uh, that, um, and this nostalgia that, uh, you know, I seem to notice that comes out in the humor and it comes out in these this rivalry uh, between the townies and the baymen, right? So the baymen are, are the ones that are obviously out, out, out in the wilds and the townies are ones that are close to the, the centralized area of uh, St. John's, or usually I would say St. Jan's. <laughs> I, I skipped the, the involuntary reflex there. Uh, but, you know, I, if I'm going to rip on you guys in Newfoundland, it's uh, it's, uh, it's out, of, out of a friendly nature. And because, you know, some of you could be fucking stupid sometimes. That's that's the reality of things. We all are. And we we're all territorial, you know. And uh, I, I got some gripes because of uh, what happened at uh, PAL Aerospace. You know, some of you guys smoke, smoke way more marijuana than... Uh, than, than the freaking tugboats in the harbor. And my heritage is from uh, PEI and uh, Quebec and uh, Nova Scotia. Uh, so obviously you guys across the ways on the other side, you know. <laughs> Why are you stealing my fish, man? <laughs> Why is that why he's got a do his eye? <laughs> Whatever. Anyways, um, I'm really bouncing around here. But of course, you know, referencing to Confederation and PEI uh, near, what's it, Georgetown? And then there's that painting, The Fathers of Confederation, uh, which then, you know, Kent Monkman did a very, you know, did his, his stole, stole uh, from this, this piece and put, imposed himself in the picture as, uh, as a questionable figure. I don't like Monkman, I don't. I really don't. Charlatan, that's right, not Georgetown. Anyways, you know, it, uh, the sentiments and the feelings of, of previous generations linger in ourselves, you know, and, you know, this, if you're going to go into modern day terminology, you know, multi-generational trauma or something like that. And, uh, you know, okay, so I like Pratt and I'm, I'm staring at his paintings and I'm like, how did he, how did he do this? Right. And, and it's, they're painful to look at. They're painful. Um, you know, the exacting detail, the razor sharp lines and everything. It's, uh, it's otherworldly. Like, as he says, he's trying to create an illusion of, of reality and not a direct representation and like the the fades and the gradients are just are just unreal. They're unreal. Um, you know, especially as the sunrise uh, comes up through the window. Now he he I mentioned the window here because I, I just again I read through this whole thing. Uh, 
and I, I took my time with these images. And he, he's he's very much concerned with the the symbolism of of a window, uh, you know, into into other worlds, inside and outside. Observing, there's very few figures in his work. Uh, it's a lot of objects and these uh, alien landscapes, almost. You know, and his influences, as he says, are like, uh, let me get into it here. Nineteen thirty-five, eh? Born in the Depression, so was my grandfather and his brothers. As the family mythos goes, uh, a watch in their pocket, a hundred dollars between them, off to Toronto. Getting on the train in. In, uh, in Picto. And then their brother, Percy, stuck around and he worked on ships uh, as a welder uh, in the Second World War in the yards. He stayed on doing that a very long time. The Steels. Now, the Steels in, in Nova Scotia are, are a large family. As as other Pratts, you know, obviously the, the correlation there between Pratt and Whitney, Christopher Pratt and then Chris Christopher Pratt. We're all families um, amongst each other and griveling and sniveling and you know, it, it seems like well when there's nothing else to do, uh people love to Uh, to rip on each other or to look down on or turn their nose up at people uh, across the bay even a different community very tribalistic it's very much an english scottish and irish tradition you know the, the, the humor comes out of burning each other or uh, making light of a bad situation no matter what Where's he looking? Uh, I'm trying to find where, where he's talking about his influences. There we go. Yeah, he was, uh, he says he's, his influences. People have drawn parallels between your, your work and other Canadian and international artists. Who would you say influenced you the most? Of the Canadian sources that are most commonly cited as influencing my work, the most prominent would be Alex Colville. But when I, when I was at Mount Allison, I had Lauren P. Harris as a teacher. Not many people know his work as well as they should, but he had a strong influence on me. I was always attracted to the work of Jean-Paul Lemieux and Lionel Lemoyne uh, Fitzgerald. Earlier on, growing up in, in Newfoundland before Confederation, we had American stuff and British stuff, so we had American magazines, and I was well aware of painters like Charles Sheeler, Winslow Homer, Edward Hopper, Thomas Aikens, the Ashcan Ash School, the Regionalists, and the Hudson River School, even Jackson Pollock and Mark Rothko, before I had even heard of the Group of Seven. And that's the thing right there, is that even our own people here in Canada don't give a shit or a flying fuck about artists.
And if you ask people on the street, if they knew of Christopher Pratt outside of Newfoundland, they'd probably reference the actor. That's right, yeah, Guardian of the Galaxy, right? Parks and wrecks, wrecks, you know, we all come from humble roots and we never know where we're going to end up. You never know where what's going to launch our career and, and propel us into stardom in such great heights. Now, not all of his works are included in this book. And, and again, you know, just these... The bridge. Yeah. But I enjoy his color palette. You know. These turquoise blues. And the whites. They're very monochromatic in a lot of ways. And... You know this guy, he designed the Newfoundland flag. Again, how do you fucking paint this stuff? It's um, just the quality of the finish. Again, I think it, I think it's a lot of it has to, a lot of it's acrylic. You know, he says it says he was experimenting with gauche and and oils early on, and then maybe like it took him about what twenty years uh, to become uh, an officer of the Order of Canada. To get some get some recognition. Now I lived in St. John's uh, for a few months. Again, working at Pal on the the DFO uh, aircraft, the King Airs. But uh, also the dash eights or one dash eight. Ours on that. You know, I have a lot of unfinished business at different places across the country. And it's not that, I, that I, I mean to hold a grudge against these companies. It's that these companies hold a grudge against contractors. Uh, there's, at certain points, it's like you, 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 may, you slip up uh, a few times and you're not allowed to be human anymore. Uh, or you're not allowed to think on your feet. Because again, you know, like I said, you know, um, there's this, uh, this mythos of hospitality that has to, has to be, that is associated with Newfoundland and being good to, to people from a ways. But, uh, that's on the surface level, honestly. And in, in, in all the con in the context is in context that I was there, you know, 
I didn't feel like I was a stranger, but I didn't feel like I was welcome either. Just a stupid mainlander, that's all. Now there's a lot of, again, some resentments because of, you know, the COD moratorium and these other political things that happened in, 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 in between, say, the flag incidents or the deal with uh, Hydro-Quebec and other the transfer payments, you know, the haves and the have-nots. Especially from the richy rich hoity toity provinces such as Ontario and Quebec. Or we're talking the changes the changes of in industry and um, you know feelings towards the government in which you know the, the government of Newfoundland paid people in smaller communities uh, to pick up everything they knew and, and loved. In their little inlets and in their shoals and and their their subsistence fishing and to get on the highway and move into St. John's or larger centers like uh, I don't know uh, Deldo or Argentia. or uh, Forgive me, it's a bit a bit late in my day right now. Deer Lake, Twilling Gate, Corner Brook, Gander. You know, a lot of them, including this, you know, because Chris Pratt is, is concerned about his disappearing identity. And a lot of people, they, 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 they speak volumes of community and, and family values. But, you know, this is, to me, this is a mask of... Of other problems. It's not like everything can be solved with a bunch of mummers and a kitchen party. And and again, you look you look at some of some of his photos, uh, Chris Chris Pratt's portraits, and they are so angry, they are so dark, you know. But that may just be a reflection of myself and and where I'm at. But still, waters run deep, and these these images. You know, uh, here today, gone tomorrow. That's the way a lot of artists feel. And I feel like that. I feel like I'm not getting the respect or the attention that I deserve. And, and the, 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 they're just so dense. And without having... Without having the person in front of you. You know, like look at these train cars, the, the coach cars. And one of them is, uh, let's paint the suit. You know, there's just some things you don't move on from. Like him and, and the death of his father. We're talking about Pratt here. And, uh, you know, the, the firing, his studio, the flooding, the divorce of his wife, and the separation for 10 years. That's fucking heavy, dude. That's heavy. You know, you'd be separated from your wife for 10 years, and then all of a sudden decide, oh, well, that's the end of that. 
you know, have like four or five children together. And I look at I look at this uh, is Deer Lake uh, Junction Brook Memorial. This is done in 1999. It's of the the hydroelectric dam. And the, the architecture of this building reminds me a lot of the one that's in Peterborough on the, uh, the Ontonabee River. You know, these, these vaulted windows and straight up and down panels from the early, uh, early last century. With this this stoic and 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 Spartan simplistic architecture, and the simplicity with the you know the just act you know just hints of the of the generators and the power that's inside of them. A lot of people don't understand visual language. They don't understand symbolism. They don't. Give a shit. But, you know, um, he says, it's, it's towards the end of this book, it's like, yeah, he says, well, life is not, not a rehearsal. And my update to that is, of course, life is not a video game. Like, there's some portraits of women, but they're just, they're, they're not sexual. They're like removed, you know, preoccupation. They're pissed off. The only award I've ever received for my art is up there. And perhaps I should be happy about that. Big fish in a small pond, this guy. It's hard to uh, have your voice heard in, in the contemporary era, this post-internet epoch, when you're drowned out by so many other mediocre um, artists. And, you know... People that go to art school, they get all the favors. They get they get all the they get all the grants. They get all of the the opportunities. So if I got a chip off my shoulder, for a multitude of different reasons, then I'm entirely justified. There's no greater motivation than rejection. There's just some things you can't you can't move on from. You know, I don't think anyone has opened this book in years. Years. And like there's this era in art during the 70s and the 80s that is just 
I don't know, not in my opinion, not very good. It's uh you have to view it through this cocaine haze. Or you you're like heroin or something. You know, he never gave up. Now, I'll admire, I admire him for that, you know, up until his dying day. At this point in my life, as an artist, as it, it did before in many cases, you know, um, not including the, the acts of self-destruction for, for, for attention. But I feel like no one gives a shit about me. And maybe that's the problem. Maybe I shouldn't give a shit. In the end, life is an act of letting go. Oh, glory be, old Newfoundland. I wish to see you again. It may happen again before I die. And I've forgotten about. Rest in peace, Christopher Pratt. And if you didn't know, he died last year, 2022. It was June. Anyways, I encourage you to look up his, his art. Um, you know, I didn't know about him until I went into the library. And I saw it out. This, this stuck out like a sore thumb. And being on the road, you know, I, 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 when you're on the road, there's... Especially in the dark, uh, you really don't have much to think about, or you do, and both of those things can be dangerous. Anyways, this has been an art talk. I don't mean to depress any of you. Um, I just want more people to appreciate uh, Canada for what it was and to understand the things that we're losing in the process. And very much like, like Chris here, uh, the ever 
uh, marching forward in, in time. For the, uh, under the banner of progress. When we could be going, we could be going backwards, you know, headlong into oblivion. Being an artist is an observation of time and it's not for the weak. It really isn't. Thanks for watching. Keep trying. I will.